Hello everybody and welcome to another Commands and Cutters Ancients uh, playthrough. Uh, we have just uh, ended the Second uh, Punic War and we are pretty much ready to uh, enter the second century BC. But before we do that, we have one uh, big battle to do, an important battle. And um, yeah, we actually we need to rewind the time a bit back to 217 BC. And this is the Battle of Raffia. Um, and this is uh, a huge one. I mean, this is not a, uh, a small skirmish, right? This is one of the largest battles in the ancient, um, uh, ancient times. And we are in the Hellenistic world. We are um, finding ourselves close to the Egyptian border, you could say, in Judea or something, somewhere there. Um, this is, as you can see here, we have the Ptolemaic empires or Ptolemaic, Ptolemaic um, kingdom troops here, and we have the Seleucid um, um, empire troops down here. So these are Greeks uh, basically fighting each other. Okay, these are Egyptians, and these are, I mean, the Seleucid empire is really huge and yeah maybe we should start the story actually there because uh, we have a pretty new um, king here called Antiochus the third or Antiochus the Great as he's also known as now when he became the king or uh, I don't know maybe you could say emperor because usually you say the empire of usage right anyway um, the problem had been before these years that the Seleucid Empire has been um, well falling apart and there are lots of rebellions. It, I mean, it's a huge empire, you know, all the way from the Mediterranean up north and all the way to Persia and, and I don't know, maybe even closing to, to India, right? It's a, it's a huge empire with many people. So there are local revolts happening here and there. So he had got his hands full of uh, quelling those uh, rebellions. But he also wanted to regain control of uh, the former Seleucid Empire. I mean, uh, if you remember from um, the first emperor's time, it was just after the succession, succession wars and all that. It's a huge empire and he wants to um, regain that glory. And he was pretty um, successful in that. And uh, I think actually in 219, he had already planned um, a campaign down south uh, towards Judea and that area. Um, which is the main main pathway to to Egypt, basically, because also um, the Battle of Raffia is uh, contained with something we call the uh, Fourth Syrian War. There's a lot of Syrian wars going on, or uh, actually, I think it's six of them, and most of them really has been about. Uh, Ptolemaic Kingdom and the Seleucid Empire fighting over uh, this same area we are we are finding ourselves now. Um, I think there's also some other causes of war. Uh, one of the uh, Syrian wars was about um, some success, succession crisis in in the Seleucid Empire, I believe, uh, or or maybe it was the uh, Antigone. I don't remember, but. Mostly it's the Ptolemaeans and Seleucid fighting each other. Sometimes uh, um, other other guys are involved. Uh, for instance, Ante the Antigone the, uh, kingdom also, who is another successor state. Anyway, in 219 he he wanted to go south uh, to regain that area, Judea and. Um, Close, in, close to the border of Egypt. But for some reason, I don't remember why, that was cancelled. So he did a new one, which he managed to pull through in 217. 
so he marched south, took control of most of that area there, and instead of uh, continuing his march towards Egypt, he actually stopped and you know consolidated his uh, his um, uh, land winnings and and uh, try to bring order there first. Now, in Egypt, we have uh, Ptolemy the the fourth. I think he's he's also a pretty new uh, king there. Uh, and it's said that he's kind of a weak king by this time. So he, um, well, it, it, it's said that his, uh, you know, ministers and, and court was really uh, strong and, and did get through their wishes and, and wills, which was just, you know, egoistic things. So he didn't really have the grip over the empire. Uh, this is Ptolemy the uh, fourth, also called Philopator, which is meaning something like he who loves his father, <laughs> something like that. And um, the thing is, I mean, there have been fights, as I said, with the Syrian wars before these, and this is a contested area. And the problem now with for the for the Egyptians, the Ptolemaics is that uh, you know traditionally in the in the the main part of an army was this phalanx right and uh, traditionally you only draft Greeks into those lines but uh, if if we had continue with that he, he would have had a much smaller army than than Antiochus would have so that was a problem for Ptolemaios and the Egyptians. So, for the first time, they did draft, I mean, native Egyptians to to train as in a, in a phalanx formation. So, that was a big uh, project they had in Egypt. And they did that just in time uh, to manage to, for this battle. So, actually, in this battle, we have Egyptians for the first time in in the phalanx order and fighting alongside the Macedonians, uh, Macedonian phalanx style here, which is pretty cool. And it's actually a big bunch of them. I think it's about 20,000 Egyptians in the phalanx ranks here, phalanx ranks. So that's pretty cool. Um, so why Antiochus was here consolidating his, uh, uh, his winnings, uh, Ptolemaios, when he had a good army that could match Antiochus, he marched towards him. And they were camping, both of them, close to Raffia. I think they were just a few kilometers of each other, these camps. And uh, the big battle, if you say could say so, didn't happen instantly, but there was several days, I think it was five days of skirmishing outside the, the respective camps here. And, but after that, both kings decided, okay, let's field our armies and duke it out. So that's what happened here in 217, uh, which we're gonna play today. So if we look here, we can see, we first have, um, Antiochus the third or Antiochus the Great's army. Uh, they have 62,000 foot. And I mean, these guys are from all over the world, I almost could say, right? Because, well, first of all, there are a lot of uh, Macedonian style um, phalanxes here. I th I'm not really sure about the number, but I think it's maybe, uh, maybe half of these guys are those. And uh, so about I don't know really twenty five to thirty thousand maybe, but there's also a lot of other guys uh, drafted from Greece. We have Thracians, we have troops from Anatolia, we have of course a lot of Persian style units here. We have, um, well, a lot of troops from more northern territories. For instance, um, 
uh, whereas today Turkmenistan, so we have folk from people from from there. So, and we also have Cretan archers. Um, I mean, loads of different types of troops here. Six thousand horse and one hundred and three elephants, and these are uh, of the um, of the Indians' uh, stock. And I'm gonna talk a bit more about the elephants in a minute. Um, we will compare that to Ptolemy's army. Uh, so Ptolemy the um, fourth, he has a really a big infantry uh, section here with seventy thousand infantry. And remember, twenty thousand of these are uh, uh, Egyptian phalanites, and then we have. Uh, a lot of Macedonian style phalanxes here as well. I think they are actually more, maybe 25,000. Uh, 6,000 horse. Um, I'm not sure. I read something that, somewhere that actually Antiochus only have 5,000. And no, I mean, the, I mean the other way around, I believe. Uh, the Ptolemies only have 5,000 horse, but Never mind. And then they have 73 elephants, and these are the, of the African stock. Okay, so smaller elephants and less of them, actually. Uh, and in the Ptolemaian army, we also have... Uh, um, well, we also have Cretan archers here. We have a lot of mercenaries. We have maybe more troops from North Africa. We have all the way to Libya, we have Libyan uh, infantry here, and well, loads and loads. So basically, if you think about this battle, we I think we have about you know maybe one hundred fifty thousand men fielded in on this plane from all over the known world at this time. So pretty, pretty uh, epic. Now, so. Both armies arrayed in a pretty classic style. We have the phalanxes, the heavier infantry in the center, with the cavalry and lighter units and mercenaries more on the flanks. Uh, Antiochus placed himself uh, on the right-hand flank. I think uh, Ptolemy, the, he did uh, initially, well, he was in the... I think it was actually in the, in the left flank of uh, his army, but he, he moved later to the center. And I'm going to mention that in a, in a minute as well. So the battle started with the young, eager Antiochus charging forward with his cavalry wing. Uh, and here we have the, the elephant clash that happened. Because when the African elephants of uh, Ptolemy saw the Indian I mean, these large, huge elephants and a large number of them as well attacking, they pretty much panicked and did rush behind the Ptolemaic lines, but they arrayed there apparently. Uh, but they, they caused some, some uh, disorder among the uh, Ptolemaian troops over here. And then come the cavalry shock. They pretty much crushed the uh Ptolemy and left and so they started to retreat with Antiochus uh in hot pursuit here so he he went off pretty much off the board I believe if you look at uh just the, the battle board here but on the Ptolemaic right they were pretty successful so they started also to uh retreat um forcing the the counterparts to retreat so the Seleucids started to retreat here on their left. So we have a kind of a pivotal swing door effect happening here. And uh, at that time, uh, well, Antiochus thought, okay, since this went so good, he, he thought pretty much that the battle was won, right? But Ptolemy, he went to the center and did what he could to urge on his uh, phalangites to, to charge the, uh, uh, the Seleucid um, uh, main infantry line here. And so they did. So there was a hard fight uh, between the uh, phalanxes here. 
uh, I think it was called a hard and stiff fight, according to Polybius, because the details of this battle is, uh, as usually, uh, we, we are getting from Polybius. He's the one who presents the numbers for us and all that. Anyway, uh, close fight, and actually the, the Egyptian phalanxes fought really well, and in the end, uh, the Seleucid phalanxes started to break and retreat. So there was pretty much in a in a route here. Okay, so later on Antiochus returned from his pursuit of the of the Ptolemaic left flank, and he saw what was happening, and he probably he he panicked a bit, and he started to uh, ride around his troops, trying to rally them, getting um, them to stand again. But that was too late, actually. He was he was away for too long from the battle. He could have managed to do that if he had entered a bit earlier from his pursuit, but he didn't. So uh, the infantry was in full, full route, route, and his left flank was gone. His right flank probably scattered, plundering, and doing you know all that that happens during a pursuit somewhere probably way off. And the day was lost for Antiochus, so what looked like something that, it, I mean, it started really well for Antiochus and it looked like he will gain the day, but in the end, Ptolemaios won the battle. Uh, and I think it was much to thanks to the, the Egyptians that swelled his numbers in his infantry ranks and they fought really well and apparently... Uh, I don't know how much training they got for this phalanx style battle, but they should have gotten really good up training there and managed to, I mean, fight against Macedonian phalanxes. I mean, we also have the real elite here for the on the phalanx. We have the silver sheets somewhere in here in the in the heavy units of uh, Antiochus side. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. And we have some. It said that the Seleucids lost about, uh, I think it was 10,000 infantry, uh, while Ptolemy only lost about 1,500 infantry or something like that. Ptolemy also, though, uh, lost more uh, elephants and uh, horse, but on the other hand, he captured some Indian elephants uh, after this battle. So, um, it was a big success for the Ptolemaic Kingdom. They regained the control of Judea here and, um, well, later on Antiochus will be back fighting Ptolemy's son, I think. I don't believe there is a scenario of that, but I'm not sure. We're gonna see if we find anything about that and he will take control of this land anyway. Um, but of course, if in, in the longer run we're going to see the Romans entering the stage also in this theater of war and, uh, well, this will spell the end of these uh, Hellenistic uh, kingdoms here. But anyway, we're not there yet. <laughs> so that's the short story about this battle. So. Um, as you can see, I have some orange troops over here. I have used the retro spec, uh, what is it called? Retrofit, I think. Retrofit <laughs> uh, things from this uh, package, the Spartans. So I have uh, replaced, instead of using the Eastern Kingdom blocks for the whole army, those fighting in a more Greek style will be um, orange. And we also have the Greek leaders as orange blocks. Okay, so let's have a look at the battlefields. Oh, let's let's keep this here. So, where should we start? Well, we should start with Antiochus. So, I mean, these are large armies, really large armies, a lot of good quality troops here. And we have, if you look at the left flank of uh, Antiochus, we have well, one thing that's um, um, I think about. I mean, first of all, the um, 
the Seleucids, they should have, you know, better quality elephants because they are larger and they really frighten those uh, elef uh, African stock style elephants. But um, still we see one elephant unit on each side here and one over here. And that's, um, I don't know, maybe... I don't know, maybe maybe it's okay, but I think maybe they should have maybe two over here or something like that, just to... First of all, they are they have more elephants. I mean, about uh, 30 more or something like that, right? And also, um, they are of this Indian better quality, if you could call it that, elephants. So maybe it could be something to place two elephants here, but... Uh, I just the thing that I noted when I looked at the setup here, but anyway, we have one elephant unit here. Uh, we have light infantry. We have probably Cretan ar archers, but it's on not only Cretan archers, I believe. We have also others, but there's another archer unit over there. Um, then we have some medium heavy cavalry here and some auxilia back here and auxilia there. So that's the left section here. Um, so pretty pretty good I think for a flank. Uh, of course they are a bit heavier over there and they should win this flank according to history. But pretty good. Then we have the main infantry line. We already mentioned those uh, auxiliaries here. We have medium heavies. We have auxilia. I bet we have some Thracians here. Maybe some uh, mercenaries over here in the uh, medium heavies here and then we have two units of heavy infantry uh, together with Nicarchus uh, the leader so here we have the Macedonian phalanx then on the right hand flank which is Antiochus flank himself he's, he's here along with a heavy cavalry unit we have that elephant unit that, that we talked about and then we have a medium heavy and also a light cavalry. So pretty strong cavalry wing here, uh, boosted with some more archers and a light infantry unit. Um, also, I forgot to mention, we have a medium heavy infantry actually down here to anchor the, the main line. Uh, so here's a pretty hard hitting uh, flank. So, and these guys should overtake the Ptolemaic um, left flank. So if we also talk somewhat about uh, tactics here, I, it would be nice to mimic history a bit and start with a big charge. I mean, imagine if we get a cavalry charge, we can get those elephants in at once. But if we don't, I might use all these lights over here to harass that elephant, try to get some flags against it to make it trample their own troops over there. That would be a good start for Antiochus if he cannot pull through and cavalry charge from beginning. So that's pretty much his army. Pretty good, pretty heavy, pretty everything. So <laughs> uh, these guys will be hard fighting. But on the other hand, Ptolemaios has a good army as well. If we start on their right, which is their uh, cavalry fist, uh, we have the elephants here, African stock. We have some heavy cavalry over there, just like we have here for the um, Seleucids. Uh, and uh, we have also a leader here called Ekekratus, Greek leader. And we have light cavalry, we have some bows. Remember, both sides actually have uh, Cretans here. Um, we have light infantry. Back there we have a warrior unit, uh, maybe it's more like attached to the main line actually, as an anchor. Um, probably some, I don't know who those guys are actually, but um, and I'm not really sure. Maybe there are some goals also in this battle. Uh, I could imagine there are some goals actually here, but I don't know if those guys are. Anyway, then we come to the main line. We have some auxilia. We have three units of heavy uh, infantry, and here is uh, Ptolemy the uh, fourth, Philopator himself, and then we have two um, 
medium heavies. I can't imagine those guys being the uh, Egyptians because we have more Greek um, phalanxes in this battle. Uh, so maybe these three are those and here are the Egyptians. Then we have some light infantry back here backing up and then we come to uh, their cavalry wing and we have back there a medium heavy then we have the elephants some light cavalry and then more bows and a light infantry unit so not a bad army but if you look at the wings the ptolemaic left wing is the weakest in the in this game that's for sure um yeah that's basically it i think and yeah again about some tactics here so I'd like to charge forward with that flank, charge forward with the Ptolemaic um, right flank. And actually this could be, okay, this battle is fought to eight banners. I haven't really gone through the war council yet. So um, let's take a quick look at that first. So we have the Ptolemaic army with Ptolemy the fourth as the leader, and we have them with five command cards, the Seleucids, Antiochus the Great, and also five common cards. So there would be no difference in, in the card amount there. And the Seleucid starts first. That's what I talked about the flank. If we can get that cavalry charge or the lights to move up, that would be nice. But what I wanted to mention is that we have eight victory banners for this battle. So it's a fairly large battle. Uh, no, no special rules. But what I wanted to return to is that the infantry lines are pretty, you know, we have, I mean, it's a six hex difference or distance to, to march before the battle. And that will take time with these heavier style troops. So one thing that might happen is, as we have seen in some other battles, is these guys will really not reach each other in this battle. I mean, okay, eight banners, uh, it's a large amount. I mean, it's the maximum we have. Uh, that we can have in a Commands and Colors game, Ancients game, but the thing is, I believe the battles will be decided on the flanks. Um, so probably we will see uh, the flank attacking there and then maybe crushing into the line, and same here. So um, just, that's just my feeling of it. I mean, it if these guys would have been a bit closer to each other, the infantry lines, maybe we would see some more of those guys, but um, or, or infantry battle, but I'm a bit in doubt we will see much of that actually. And that's a bit a pity, but let's see. I mean, it, we have seen all the things that could happen through, uh, during these games, so we'll see. Anyway, um, I have dealt the cards, so we are pretty much ready to start this battle out right really and the um, yeah so Antiochus is the one who starts we're gonna oh can you believe it okay we have a first strike and we have a mounted charge that's what I'm talking about we could get those in a uh, cavalry on um, elephants in in turn one too bad we cannot get the other cavalry into battle that sucks. Maybe we should actually wait even if we can play that. But anyway we have the first strike really early on here so we're gonna place it here so try to remember we have it we're gonna instantly replace that with a two units right which is good because that could put our heavy cavalry also in a strike range and sooner or later we'll get that mounted charge and then we can get a really good attack but let's see first what card they can play that's a c or lowest order count so we're gonna flip uh, the C cards, we have a leadership any section, or we play two right. I mean, this is a, I mean, this is a pretty perfect opening. Look at this. I mean, we could play this leadership any section first. Arrange our troops for the upcoming charge, which we hope we get next time, and then we charge. Ptolemaics will of course try to counterattack. Then we have this. So what an opening hand for. Uh, Antiochus the Great, really awesome. So I'm gonna play leadership any section, and that will be Antiochus. 
plus three units. So I'm gonna place, be sure to place all the guys I need. I mean, these guys can these guys can reach the enemy. These guys can reach the enemy. Only these two cavalry units needs to be placed um, somewhere that where they can reach. And remember, we can with heavy cavalry uh, using a mounted charge, we can move three hexes. Uh, yeah, heavy units may move three hexes and still battle. Yes, so I think I'm gonna put these guys into action. Uh, maybe then, uh, let's see one, two, and let's bring forth some light cavalry. Then, so I'm gonna already start harassing that elephant unit. One, two, and one, two. So these guys will start throwing some javelins. We move up. These guys, let's move them into, give them some support. Ah, on the other hand, these guys need to be able to retreat. So, yeah. Let's. Ah, oh, this is a. Maybe this is not that good of a place to put those light cavalry. Let's put them here instead. One, two, or three, actually. Okay. Okay, now they can at least evade. And they have. Let's give them also some support. So I'm gonna place myself like this. Okay, these guys cannot retreat now, but. Um, Let's see. Let's see what happens. Okay. So now we're gonna throw some javelins, and we start with um, let's start with a light infantry. They will throw some javelins against that elephant unit, and that's the flag, which we wanted. Um, so we're gonna have some trampling to do. Let's just check so we play that correctly. I tend to forget these each time. So, um, they will retreat one per hex, that's okay, they can retreat though, but before they do that, they're gonna, uh, we're gonna roll two dice for each adjacent unit, friend or foe, and symbols hit. Okay, so let's start back there with the light cavalry, looking for greens, no. The light infantry, no greens, and then that archer unit, greens again. No hits, no trampling happening, so these guys actually retreat in good order there. Okay, fair enough. What's not so good is that our elephants cannot now reach their elephant. Mm. Well, well. That's okay. So then we're gonna throw a javelin also against that uh, bow unit there. And they miss. Okay. Replace the card in slot C. So we are seeing uh, Antiochus arranging his troops for the big charge. Um, the only thing that bothers me a bit is that the elephants cannot reach their elephants, only light units now, and that's not so effective, you know, attacking light units with elephants. But that's what, even, what we need to do. Anyway, um, now it's uh, Ptolemy, and we have a leadership any section for them too, and we have a counterattack, and the counterattack would be a leadership any section right now. We don't have any leaders over there, but we have some here, because I'm gonna prepare my assault on that flank. Um, and... You know what? If we would play the counterattack now, we could arrange our troops in our <laughs> attack here, and then with another leadership in the section we can pull through the, the attack, actually. And we can start harassing the enemy with some bows actually right now. So let's do that. 
Um, so, what was the name of that guy again? Ekekratos. Ekekratos will be... So I'm gonna play that counterattack actually. Because I'm gonna, I want to keep this card um, to pull through the next uh, leadership in this section. So these guys, the elephants needs to move into range. Um, let's. Let's do like this, like that. So the elephants, I want to attack their elephants. And I'm gonna send these guys forward to harass. Maybe we should move these guys first. One. Two, three, and four, and then these, and then I'm gonna move forward my heavy cavalry. So these are done, but we have some um, um, missile fire to do. And like here, we're gonna target the elephants first. So let's start with um, let's start with light infantry again. One die, miss, and then the light cavalry. One die. Miss. So nothing happened here. Which is pretty good for us because now the elephant can reach their elephant. Replace the card and let's see what if Antiochus can pull through his cavalry charge or mounted charge this time. A, B or C. He actually can, but before we just play the card, let's see what we have in C. We have a light troops. Could be handy then later on. So now I'm gonna go with a mounted charge. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna attack first over here. One, two. I mean we can order up to five mounted units. So we're gonna do um yeah, let's bring in our elephants, these guys and these guys. So I mean now I have three here and two here. That's five units. So Antiochus will do a surprise counterattack over here. I'm pretty sure uh, they were not. Let's see, I need to move. Yeah, I can move three hexes with that elephant. That's awesome. Um, I'm going to actually attack the heavy cavalry with my elephants. One, two, and three. Now, these guys, they will move one. Two, maybe three. Give those elephants a retreat path and also get out of the way of any trampling happening. So these guys will just, uh, probably I will just attack these lights. And over here, now that elephant is not, we are not too effective with cavalry against elephants, right? So, I mean, it would be nice to attack with my heavy cavalry against that elephant, but that's a really risky move because elephants ignore all sword hits and they can ignore also one hit and one flag from cavalry. So cavalry are really not that good against those heavies there. But we need to do something. So I'm gonna at least ride into the midst of it. So. Oops. One, two, three. I'm gonna go there. I need to go there actually. So I can so I can get these guys into range because the elephants need to go one, two, three, and they only have one target. So these guys need to go one, two, three, and attack over here. Um okay. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Let's see what happens. So I'm gonna actually start with the right hand flank and I'm gonna go in with that medium heavies first. Well, there are two reasons. First of all, I want to gain the leader support while I can. Second thing is try to get those guys down as much as possible so I can follow up with uh, Antiochus, killing off those who cannot evade or retreat and then I can do another attack. Um, 
against those lights, even though they will, of course, evade. And then we have the elephant attack, which would be pretty ineffective, I believe. But anyway, so let's start with those lights. And since it's a mounted charge, I get another die. So it's four dice. And they cannot take a single flag. So we might get them with one blow, actually. Let's see. One, two, three hits. Not really, but three hits. Really good. But they're standing their ground, amazingly, by being surrounded by uh, enemy cavalry. So they're gonna battle back with two dice. And they don't hit with swords, but they got a flag, which I can ignore because I'm supported over here. I will ignore that. So now, Antiochus himself will try to finish the job. Uh, so that four dice from the beginning, and then the fifth from the card. Five dice, one hit is enough. We got loads, actually three hits in. So these guys are done. We got the first victory banner for Antiochus the Great. He can go in, he can actually go one more and attack. I think I might go back actually. Then I attack those light cavalry who will evade or try to evade, but I'm gonna roll my five dice though. And let's see, any green symbols hit. Oh, we got one. One hit. And then these guys evade. And I'm gonna go there actually. I don't want to be around that elephant. Okay. Now the elephant will attack the bows who will also evade, I believe. That will get, first of all, two dice and then the third dice because of the card. No greens, so the these guys need to evade two hexes since they can. One, two. The elephant cannot gain ground. Yeah, so that's the situation over there. Uh, we got one banner and we are seeing those guys retreating as in history. But here's some, a bit a historical thing. Well, the uh, left hand cavalry flank also charges first. So, I'm gonna start with the elephants attacking there. I'm gonna just see if there's any special things. Elephant close combat dies, I need to check out that. Um, otherwise, same dice as opposing unit uses. So this is a pretty, pretty hefty thing. I hope I can evade with the heavies. Uh, may evade against foot on elephants. The question is basically, should I Evade with these guys because these guys will get uh, four dice base and one for the mounted shots. We got actually five dice and any, you know, sword hits are rolled again. So that's, uh, yeah, I need to evade actually. I need to evade with those heavy cavalry. That sucks, but I need to do that. But we're gonna roll the five dice and any red will hit. Luckily for uh, Ptolemaios, there's no reds, so they can evade, and these guys cannot gain ground by that. Really lucky there. Uh, then we have another attack, and who should we pick? I think I picked those Numidians, uh, not Numidians, but uh, well, maybe they are, we don't know. Uh, this could actually be Numidians, um, because there's a lot of North African troops uh, in these ranks. But I'm not sure. Anyway, attack, it's four dice. I will, of course, evade, or try to evade, but we're gonna roll the four dice. Looking for greens, we got one. So one of the uh, light cavalry blocks down here. I'm gonna go back to, and these guys cannot uh, take advantage of the terrain, or gain ground, basically. But, <clears throat> well, interesting start. Uh, we have put these guys in a bit of a disarray and we pulled back those guys really long. They they really don't have any targets other than the elephant. Um, yeah, let's see. Interesting start. And it's going to be really interesting to see what card the Ptolemy army can play now. 
We place the card there and they're going to roll for Ptolemy. It's a CD or E, so we cannot play the leadership at least now. Which could have been good because they are still linked here. But let's see, CD or E, there could be some nice cards hidden here. We have another counter attack, so we could actually play a mounted charge. Right. We have order light troops and we have an inspired center leadership. Uh, okay. But I believe I want to do the counter attack now. Because that will give me a mounted charge with five units as well. So this is amazing. Um, there is though a problem. That's that heavy. We only can attack. No, actually, we can attack here if we move those elephants away. Yeah. Okay. One, two, three, four. And yet one. This could be really deadly, actually. This counterattack could be really deadly. Um, who should we pick? The lights over here or the lights over there? Uh, I think I picked the lights over here. I can take advantage of that leader. Okay, so here we go. So the elephants, the heavies will attack here. So the elephants need to attack somewhere else. So I think I might hinder these guys from retreating. I'm also eager to attack those elephants. I think I'm going to do that. So let's go here. I wonder how many dice you get against an elephant. Uh, Three dice against other elephants, but I get the fourth dice from the card, so it's worth it. So I'm gonna go there. These guys go one, two, and three. Um, these guys will hinder these guys from retreating. One, two, three, four. And over here. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna place my elephants here. I'm gonna attack Antiochus now. I mean, he is in danger now. And we're gonna also put these guys. Maybe we should do this instead. One, two, and one, two, three. Antiochus is in grave danger. He cannot really retreat. We can't ignore that one flag, but this gonna this is gonna hurt. This will hurt. Uh, they're in a bad situation right now. So but remember what we have here. Let's see. So I'm going to randomize the order of attacks, except for some. Um, I mean, I will attack with an elephant first. I want, I want to attack with these guys before I attack with these guys, of course. And this attack could also be first. So I'm going to randomize, randomize of these three attacks. This, this, and this. I'm going to roll a die. So one, two, it's the elephants here. 3, 4, it's uh, the heavy cavalry, and 5, 6, it's that one. And then we're going to check if we play the first strike. So that's a 5. So we start actually over there with the elephant. So we're going to see if uh, uh, Antiochus plays the first strike now. Uh, so we need basically to roll a, a flag. No, um, uh, these are not counted because they don't hit against the elephants. Actually, the red won't hit either because they can ignore one hit from cavalry. So the only chance we play the first strike here is by rolling a flag. Let's see. No, it's a blue, so it wouldn't be anyway. So we will not play the first strike yet. So the elephant will attack and they got four dice from the beginning because it's heavy cavalry they're attacking. And then they got one for the mounted charge. Five dice. We can ignore one flag. Oh my. Okay, so that's two hits. That's three hits. So the heavy cavalry goes down actually. Oh my, this is crazy. This is crazy. Antiochus, best thing on the right hand flank is gone. Whew. That hurt. So actually get Ptolemy first uh, banner. 
And we're gonna check what happened with Antiochus. Let's see if he survives the battle. He did, so he can now relocate. Um, let's go here. So the elephant can go in and they can actually attack once more and that they will do. But this time I will try to evade. Uh, let's see if we, if we manage. We're gonna roll. This time it's four dice, three from the beginning because medium heavies, and then uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, okay. Medium heavies, and then the card. So the elephants get actually four dice, and they got two hits in. Oh my, oh my. So two down. Then these guys evade, and I think I need to check. For a little loss there. Well, Antiochus is fine. So that ends the elephant attack. So next up, now the, I can count these guys as well. So one, two, three. I'm gonna roll again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two. So this time is our heavies here will attack that medium heavy who cannot retreat. But first of all, we're gonna see if the first strike is activated. So we're gonna roll. That's a blue. That wouldn't hit those guys, so we don't, we will not play it now. So again, four dice, plus one for the mounted charge, giving us five dice. And these guys cannot retreat, and they are not supported or anything, so this could be the end of those but we didn't roll yeah we did roll exactly just as we needed one hit from the leader symbol or the helmet one for the cross swords and then that retreat flag which these guys need to take so they are eliminated another one for the egyptians so these guys go in and they will attack here and i will see if that light Infantry will play the first strike. And <laughs> we roll the red. That's crazy. So now this will trigger. So they're gonna actually roll first two dice. No, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Of course not. I'm gonna evade with those guys. Okay, that was dumb of me. Sorry. Um, so that will be three dice because of the uh, card. And then these guys will try to evade. Yeah, of course they're gonna evade from heavy cavalry, right? Everything else would be crazy. Uh, but look at that roll from the heavy cavalry. They got two blue blocks. Uh, then they evade. And these cannot gain ground. Okay, so now basically all these three are equal in, in priority in attack. So we're gonna roll once more just for the first strike. That's a four. So actually it's a light cavalry now who will attack something. Uh, we go for... Let's attack these because they don't have that much retreat. Oh, they, have, they have the path, but only one hex. So that forces pretty much these guys to evade as well, which they will do. So I will roll three dice because of the mountain charge. But no hits this time. So these guys evade successfully. Then we're gonna roll again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so it's the light oh the medium heavy cavalry here who will attack these mediums. Or uh, sorry, lights, and they will evade, even though they can ignore one flag, but there's no reason to standing and fighting against those guys with a mounted charge card. So we evade here. So we're gonna roll three dice with the medium. Um, no, actually four dice with the medium heavies. And no hits. So this light cavalry evades successfully also. And then we have the last, but a really heavyweight clash here. Um, the elephant. So let's see if um, 
this view seed elephant will battle first or not. Well, let's see. I think that's not a valid case actually because that's not a hit. May ignore all sword hits. I believe that's also when elephants fight elephants. They ignore those. At least it doesn't say otherwise, so I'm gonna play it like this. So the first strike is not not yet used. So I'm gonna get three dice plus one for the mounted charge. Four dice. And that's one hit. That's not a hit, but we still need to re-roll it actually. So let's do that. Another re-roll. And then a flag. Okay, so first of all a hit. Then these will start trampling. We're gonna roll first for the enemy elephant. Nothing. Then that light infantry. Nothing. And then these guys retreat and it was one hex retreat. So these guys could go in and attack again and they will. So I'm gonna check for the first strike once more. Nope, they're not going to play it, so I'm going to roll another four dice. And there's two red now, so these elephants go down, and these guys get yet another banner. It's 3, 2, 1 now, actually. We could go in. I think we're there. Okay, first strike is still in the hand here, and, well... Look at this. Um, the Seleucids try to counterattack here. Well, they managed to get these guys back, but you know, that counterattack card was awesome when when the, these guys had played a, a mounted charge, right? So, uh, well, they are really crashing through here. And over here, the Antiochus uh, charge did not go that well that he had hoped for. Um, he was met by a fierce counter charge here. It, well, it started good. They killed off that light infantry, got the banner by that. That's the only banner they have right now. But then come, then came this fierce counter attack by the mounted units here, and well, that costs because Antiochus got uh, you know uh, sacked there and had no place to retreat. So those horses just stand and died there. Well, really cool. So we're gonna replace that card. And then it's, um, yeah, it's on um, Antiochus again. Let's see what they can do now. Okay, so that's a tactic card or lowest order count. We don't have any tactic card. So I wonder, uh, I always forget about these rules. Let's see. Face-up tactic cards are lowest order again. If there is no, none or only one face-up card in the display, flip any. Play any face-up tactic card or play the lowest order account. So we have no tactic cards. So we actually need to play one of these. Two right or light units. What could we do with the two lights? Well, we could do a uh, well. We have I have a plan there. Oh, I think I'm gonna go with that two right, and we're gonna do another charge here. And now we're gonna activate the elephants. So the elephants move up here. We'll challenge the enemy elephant. And also at the same time hindering these guys from retreating because now these guys will ride around the light infantry and attack that medium heavy. Okay, here we go. Let's see if Antiochus managed to pull this through now. So we need to attack here first so we got the elephants hindering those guys from retreating. So we got uh, four dice this time. Those guys are not uh, supported. And yeah. So any, any flag will actually kill them now. Let's see if we can be lucky with this roll. 
Uh, no flags rolled, but we rolled a good bunch of hits there. Actually, four hits. Amazing roll. So these guys go down, giving Antiochus his second banner. We could go in and attack again, but I'm not too eager to do that against that elephant. So um, I'm going to stay here. Now, the elephant attacks the other elephant with three dice. And we got one hit and one reroll. So let's start with the reroll right away. That's a green. So one hit here. And then they can battle back. Also three dice. And they got a hit and a reroll. A green. So both of these lost one block actually. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay. So, some good news for Antiochus there. We got the banner. And a good unit eliminated from Ptolemy there, the medium heavy cavalry. Okay, so it's 3 to 2, and we're back to Ptolemy. That's a D or E. So that will be light troops or center leadership. Okay. Well, if we play the center leadership, we could start moving up our big phalanx line and we could actually attack that elephant. We could get it actually this time with that medium heavies, get those Egyptians attacking. The other option, play lights, we could pour in pretty much missiles against that elephant. We could get it as well, but if we are really unlucky, we could get that flag and then these guys could start trampling actually but over here we could pour in a lot of missile fire actually now which would be really cool so i have good two good uh two good options here i believe so therefore i'm gonna roll for it what ptolemy plays one two three light troops four five six inspired center leadership okay we go with the light troops fair enough Fair enough, so it's five of them. So I'm gonna make sure that elephant doesn't get away with playing these. And let's move up those guys as well. And then we have more lights to do here. One, two, Well, one. No, sorry. Um, no, sorry. I'm, I'm. What I'm doing here? I'm, it's Ptolemy's turn. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, one, two. Um, what else? Okay, let's bring up those guys, and on this flank. Bow units will be activated and let's pull back those guys a bit. They are in a dangerous situation here. Could get a lot of missile fire. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So these guys just pulls back over here. Um, these guys. Let's see. Let's put them here. These guys will rush two hexes sideways. One, two. These guys will stay, but these guys will move up. One, two. Here we go. So, start with that. Light calf attacking those guys with one die. Miss. The bows, same target, one die. 
flag. They need to take it and they cannot go two hexes backwards, only one, and then they lose one block. Okay, then we have this flank and we start, let's start with the, um, oh, let's start with a bow unit, two dice against the elephant. Well, that was that flag. Ah, I did it in the wrong order anyway. Well, well. So we're gonna see if it tramples that um, enemy elephant, and it did. Oh my. Oh my. So actually, <laughs> crazy enough, um, the Seleucids get the third banner. So it's 3 3 now. Then these guys retreat, and the bad thing is I did this in the wrong order. I should have done this, but I thought that it would be worth doing this first with two dice. But this would be still in range. Well, well, done is done. So, one die attack still here against that light infantry. And nothing. Not that great of a skirmish turn, okay. We lost that elephant and that's really bad. But we got one block from these, these uh, bow units. Okay, that's it. Then it's Antiochus' turn again. Okay, so another one of these. And now we only have one um, card up. And the rule says, if there's none or only one face-up card in the display, flip any one. So I'm gonna flip just A here. So I'm, I can play, I think I might need to play this one because that would be five units and that's only four. Yeah, I'm gonna, I need to play four in the center as the Seleucid player now. Let's see, four in the center. That's not optimal because we have only infantry here, but that's what I need to do. One, two, three, and four. Well, we will get one range attack at least. If we go that way. Um, and we might do that, so let's do it. So these guys can fire. Start marching forward the big phalanx line. Maybe we'll see phalanx battle in the end anyway. Let's hope so, but I got the one die attack to do. That's a flag. So we're pushing back these bow, bows here. And it's good because we got them out of range now. Okay. Then it's Ptolemy. C, D or E. Heavies, uh, two center or inspired leadership center, okay. So with the heavies we could do some nice attacks here. Uh, I might do that because two in the center doesn't really make sense and inspired leadership center, well we could move up that phalanx line of course but I will go with the heavies will be one, two, and we're gonna move up these guys actually. So we're gonna keep the line still, we're hoping if we could get the line command we could march the Egyptians with us. So we're gonna march up here. And these guys, well I might do a nice little charge somewhere. I mean we could roll up some of these guys now. Uh, so I'm gonna do this. There and there. So let's start attacking. The elephants attack first against these guys. It's two dice. But remember, they are not supported and they cannot take a single flag. But we didn't eliminate those guys because we cannot... Uh, we don't get the benefit of leader for elephants. I'm pretty sure of that. So it's only one hit. 
and they can battle back. But nothing because, yeah, no hits basically. Now we need to, we can do some cleanup here. So I'm gonna attack here first. That's four dice, we need one hit. That's it. We got that guy. We got a victory banner, the fourth one. We go in. I believe we can go one more with even if it's heavy. Uh, advance, move one hex, may battle. Yes. So we go in, we move another, and then we attack the bows. Four dice. That's one hit, it's two hits, and they can ignore one flag, I believe. Yeah, they can. So two hits. But they will battle back with two. And can you believe it? They managed to hit these guys with a shower of javelins while they're attacking. And we actually need to check uh, leaderless, ch uh, leaderless uh, loss check against uh, Epicratus. He's fine. So I can take the flag or not, however I want. I think I might take... No, I might stay. Uh, yes, I will stay here. I want to hinder those guys from, you know, making ranged attacks against me. Um... And now I forgot the first strike, actually. We could have played that. Uh, too bad. Anyway, we save that for next time. Because I think this is enough now. That was the heavy troops, by the way. I think this is enough now. Okay, the first strike will be played next time. I don't know if it has really been a important card here, but who knows what could have happened. But Need to try to remember that next time. Okay, I'll end session one here. Uh, it's been a long session, I believe. Uh, so what have you seen? As expected, a lot of activity on the flanks. Uh, we are seeing flanks getting a bit, a bit exhausted, actually, on both sides. Great losses. We still have a full elephant unit standing here, but... It's opposing most mostly light units, so it's not that effective. It should really go in and attack here on the center, then it would be deadly. And if we could do that together with these guys, that would be super deadly. Uh, over here, we also have an elephant units left, only one block though, but that's the uh, uh, still use it one. And uh, they managed to trample the other elephants to death actually here. Um, when, when they did the retreat. Uh, otherwise, pretty exhausted here as well. We have some cavalry left, especially here, and some over here, some lights left. So we could push forward now on the right hand flank with the Seleucids. Uh, but I feel these guys are a bigger threat uh, in, in terms of uh, flank advantage. And then we're actually seeing the phalanxes, both of them marching towards each other. So maybe. In the end of the battle, we might see, especially if we can get a double time or so, uh, a line command and a double time or something in here, but we might see some clashes of clash of shields. Yep. So that's it. And uh, thanks uh, guys for watching. And uh, hope we're back for part two of the Battle of Rafia. Bye for now.